In this video, I'm going to extend the idea of a line integral to a vector field. So we're going to motivate this idea with the concept of work, which we studied when we first started learning about vectors. Remember that if you displace an object by a vector d in a force field f, then the work done is just f dotted with d. And remember that the dot product can be positive, negative, or zero. It will be positive, and in this case meaning the work will be positive, if the force field and the displacement vector are generally pointing in the same direction. And we don't have to just be uh, very uh, qualitative about that, we can actually quantify that by saying if the angle between f and d is acute, then the dot product would be positive. So the work done would be positive in this case. Uh, that product is zero uh, when the vectors are orthogonal to each other, and the dot product will be negative that is, the work is going to be negative when f and d generally point in the opposite direction, which means that the angle between them is obtuse. So a quick review there. So now we're going to say that, OK, I've got a force field. It has two component uh, functions, p and q. And we have a particle moving through this force field along a curve C from the point A up to point B. And we'd like to calculate what is the work done in moving that particle along that curve. So we're going to repeat a lot of the same analysis we did when we looked at the original line integral. We're going to say we have a parameterization for our curve. It goes from t equals a to t equals b. And we're going to divide that into n subintervals of equal length. And then we'll say that the uh, points p sub 0 through p sub n uh, are the heads of the uh, points right here. So there are points on the curve. So p sub 1 is the uh, head of the position vector r of t sub 1, just as before. Now what's new here is that we're going to estimate the work done, or the displacement moving from p0 to p1, as being the unit tangent vector at the initial point times the length of the curve from p0 to p1. And then we'd estimate the displacement at from p1 to p2 as the arc length from p1 to p2 uh, times the unit tangent vector. So that's saying that, well, in our approximation, we're going in the right direction. The tangent vector is the direction in which the curve is changing, and uh, the, or pointing, I'm sorry, and then the uh, arc length should be the right length. So we've got the right direction, we've got the right length. So we can approximate the work done by just adding up the force, say at P0 times our approximation for the displacement, plus the force at P1, times the dis its displacement approximation, and so on. And so this is a Riemann sum. And if I let n go to infinity, we'll get the integral. It's a line integral now of f dotted with t ds along the curve c. So let's look at an example. Here we have a particle moving along uh, 
the force field which is shown, which has components x comma negative x. And it's moving along a portion of the parabola uh, y equals 2 minus 1 half x squared. I seem to have lost the y there. And we're starting on the y-axis and moving to the x-axis. So starting at the y-intercept, moving to the x-intercept on the positive x-axis. So what we'd like to do here is first, without doing any work, we're just going to try to decide if the work done is positive, negative, or zero. If I move along this path through this force field, will the work be positive, negative, or zero? And then we'll actually calculate the work done. Well, if I look at this curve here, and I'm going in this direction here, the tangent vector to this curve is generally going to be pointing in the same direction as the force field. It's always kind of moving uh, down and to the right, which is what our force field is doing. So we would expect that the work is going to be positive. So let's actually calculate it. A parameterization for this particular curve would be, well, uh, x is my independent variable, so we'll let x equal t, and then y would be 2 minus 1 half t squared. And since uh, x equals t, I'll look at my graph or look at my question and see that x goes from 0 to 2. All right, so then let's just take the derivative. Our prime would just be 1 and then minus t. So the length of our prime is radical 1 plus t squared, and that would tell me that the uh, unit tangent vector would be my tangent vector 1 comma negative t divided by its length, uh, radical 1 plus t squared. Now my ds is just going to be the length of our prime times dt, and we already found the length of our prime is radical 1 plus t squared dt. And then if I replace my component functions, which are just x and negative x, with their parametric equations, then uh, I'm just going to get t and negative t, because remember, x equals t. So our work line integral is going to be our function f in terms of our parameter t, so our function, our vector field, in terms of the parameter t. Uh, and then that's going to get dotted with the uh, unit tangent vector. And then my ds is just the length of our prime times dt. So this is going to simplify significantly. Uh, first of all, the radical 1 plus t squared is going to divide out. And then taking the dot product, I'll just get t plus t squared as my integrand. So very simple integral to evaluate. So when we do that, we get uh, 2 plus 8 thirds, which we can write as 14 over 3. Now, it's no coincidence, and it's nothing special about this problem, that the radical 1 plus t squared divides out because in general if I replace uh, ds with r prime of I mean the length of r prime of t dt and I replace t with its definition r prime over its length well we see that the r prime is going to divide out so a simplified formula for our work function would just be uh, f dotted with r prime of t dt. So we may want to 
uh, summarize this as f dotted with our vector differential dr, because we might want to consider dr to be r prime of t dt, which is the way we wrote it. Or we may think of dr as having components dx and dy. And if we think of it having components dx and dy and our uh, vector field, so small notation problem here, if our vector field has components p and q, then the work Uh, can be written as the line integral of p dx plus q dy. So this definition of work uh, is going to motivate our definition for the line integral of a vector field f along the curve c. It's going to be exactly the same uh, definition. So we could have uh, f dotted with dr, which we could look at dr being as the unit tangent vector times ds, or we could change to our parametric representation, or we could write it using our three component differentials with our component functions. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, where we evaluate line integrals using our different representations. So here we have our vector field uh, as a function of three variables. The component functions are simple. I have x in the i direction, negative z in the j direction, and y in the k direction. And the curve has uh, a parametric representation 2t, 3t, negative t squared, and we're going to look at this from negative 1 to 1, where t varies from negative 1 to 1. All right, so from our parametric representation, our parametric equations are x equals 2t, y equals 3t, and z equals negative t squared. So I'm going to take differentials here. I'm going to use our differential representation. This would tell me that dx would be 2 dt, dy would be 3 dt, and dz is negative 2 t dt. My component functions are, well, p equals x, q is negative z, and r equals y. So let's write those in terms of our parameter t. So x, remember, is 2t, so p would be 2t. Uh, negative z, well, z is negative t squared, so the opposite of that would be t squared. That's my q function. And then r equals y, which is 3t. So if I write the line integral this way. Remember, bounds negative 1 to 1 comes from the parameterization. We're going to have p dx plus q dy plus r dz. Let's just substitute everything in terms of t. And we'll factor out the dt and collect some like terms. That gives me, well, I have here a negative 6t squared plus 3t squared. That gives me negative 3t squared. And from here, I get plus 4t dt. So we're going to use symmetry here. Uh, this is an odd function, so it makes no contribution. And um, because our bounds are opposites, this is an even function. So I'll just change the lower bound to 0 and multiply by 2. And so perform the evaluation. And I come up with negative. Two. So we didn't say this represents work, but if this were a, wor a case where it's work, um, we would say the work is negative. So in our last example, 
we have a uh, force field with components x squared, xy, and it's uh, moving counterclockwise around the circle x squared plus y squared equals four. So our parameterization is gonna be the standard one for a circle. We're gonna have x equals two cosine of t, uh, y equals two sine of t, and that's just because the radius is two. That's where the two comes from. And we'll go once around the circle, right? Once counterclockwise around the circle, that's t increasing from zero to two pi. And so uh, our r prime, is uh, negative two sine of t comma two cosine of t. And uh, if I write my uh, vector field in terms of t, so if I take x squared, I'll get four cosine squared t, and then x times y, I'll get four sine of t times cosine of t. And now if I take f and dot it with r prime, now let's see here, I'll have negative two sine t times four cosine squared t. That'll give me a negative eight sine of t cosine squared t. Then I'll take two cosine t and multiply it times four sine t cosine t. And that gives me eight sine t cosine squared t. But these are opposites, and that tells me that that dot product is zero, which means that the work done has to be zero.